welcome back to Cards and Comics. Today I am at the National. Well, I was, and it was day one for me. I know it's like Saturday, day three or four for everyone else. But today was a big day. I finally acquired my Grail card, the 68th 3D Clemente. And I want to tell you the story of how it happened. But just wanted to let you know that this is a huge day for me from a collector perspective. I've been chasing this card for decades, 20 plus years. And it's the, you know, from the, a Clemente collecting perspective, it is peak of the, of the hill, top of the mountain, big time Clemente card. And it makes me just want to go and start hard collecting all the oddball and other rare Clemente cards I don't have. And so that's a great thing. That makes me want to continue to collect because after I got the 65 Clemente to complete my base, I kind of thought I might be done with Clemente. Hadn't really bought another card of his um, for a while. So we'll get into the um, story a little bit. So I got to the uh, hotel about 8 o'clock last night. I'm at the Holiday Inn. There's dealers and people mingling around. And I talked to a few of them who all said, including my friend Doug, who'd been here for a couple of days, no Clementes in the room. No one has seen one yet. And I think it's odd because when you find out like what happens, like, oh, well, there was one. Um, but, you know, so I'm not feeling great. I go to the, the show, get down the escalator, go to the first room. I'm really looking for Griffies and other cards so far because I just don't think there is, you know, much of a hope. I get to the next room past the corporate um, you know, area, and I run into Alan from Alan's Cards. Um, we start talking. He says he saw two uh, two Clementes on a table, or you know, 3D Clementes, and they were for sale. And I'm like, that's that's really good. Like that's what I'm here for. And just to let you know, I brought a lot of cards that I would normally not bring to have enough value to be able to get those cards, to be able to get that Clemente. So I was ready to go. I had money, I had cards, so I was I was going to make this happen. So I asked him like, "Hey, you know, where where was this table at? You remember kind of what direction?" I mean, I was just going to just you know, take off to to try to find this place. Right then, my friend Doug, who um, you know was at the show for a couple of days, he calls me and says, "Hey, I ran a Theo uh, Clemente um, uh, collector on YouTube." Great channel. Um, same only for Alan's cards. Great channel. They, uh, or Theo said, you know, I know where three of them are. And he's like, is your friend actually kind of serious about doing this? Because, you know, like, it's a big card. And I'm like, and he's like, yeah, like, serious, serious. And so he calls me, says it's Nash cards. Um, you know, you know, I think, I forget, you know, um, it was... You know, 1442 or something like that, the, you know, the, the table number. And so, you know, I take up Alan's like, hey, well, can I come along? I'm like, sure. Like, you, awesome. Like, the more the merrier. So we both took off, found the place, you know, uh, found Theo, found Doug. And you get there. There's three Clementes. There's a nine, two eights. One of the eights is priced $5,000 over the other one. So... I tell the guy, hey, I'm here to get this Clemente. I want to look at this Clemente. Serious. Really want to look at it. You know, he shows me the ones. I pick the one I want. I pick the one that was the lower price because I didn't think there was a $5,000 difference between the cards. And we start working on a deal. You know, I knew exactly what cards I was probably going to have to give up. Big cards. I mean, this is a huge card, too. And um, at the end of the day, you know, he picked two cards, 53 Mantle. 33 Ruth. I knew that's going to be the card table pick. Why not? You know, value wise, we got to a deal cash cards. Um, and uh, we probably got it done in, I won't say 20 minutes. The cool thing is, Theo was gracious. He recorded it. It's going to be on his channel. So if you want to see the, the video, um, you know, go to Clemente Collector, his channel. He will have the video up. He shot it. You know, um, and we're going to share, you know, uh, and, you know, it 
it was a great experience. Nash Cards was great to work with. They were as excited as I was on this deal. They knew I was a collector. This is this is what happens, like guys. The you know Alan was excited, Theo was excited, Doug was like just because they knew I I really cared about this card because it's you know from a Clemente collector it's it's such a big card. But you know I've been chasing it for decades and I almost gave up on it. I almost gave up on collecting Clemente because of just it was it seemed unattainable. It was just such a hard card for me to track down and get. And as we're working on the deal, a few things happen. You'll see in the video. One is this idea that my cards were old flips and that old, old flip cards become harder to sell. I think that's a video in itself, honestly, because this is the first time for me personally that I've had, uh, you know, dealers seriously, you know, discuss like, hey, this card was created a while back. Um, sorry for my AC kicks on um, in the hotel. Um that these older flips are worth less or you have to give up money because people have to get the card put into a new holder. I mean, I don't know. I know there's some pros and cons to it. It's an interesting idea, but it was a topic of conversation for this trade. Secondly was the amount of money in the trade was going to be an issue or could have been an issue because um, obviously these cards are very liquid. They're big cards, and a lot of times people just want cash. And I, you know, I've said I've lost deals, you know, for the, for these cards before because I didn't have a full cash value. Now I could have ran around the room and tried to sell to get to that cash value, but since I was able to do a trade cash deal, it worked out so much better for both of us. When you see the deal and the cards, and again, you know, you might think, or you, you know, you, you'll probably say, well, I would rather have the two cards that you traded. And the money and and it's just that's the card that's i'm not a griffy or sorry not a ruth collector i'm not a mano collector i have those cards because i think they're nice and great cards but i bought those cards pre-pandemic and the amount of money that those cards are worth now um the equity i have in those cards versus what i paid basically made me be able to do this deal with you know such little money up front for me in terms of just you know what i actually had to pay for those cards um compared to what i got in the clemente it made that deal so much easier or palatable for me to, to swallow because yes i gave it more value than, than the clemente may not may be worth however uh, you know if you look at the valuation of fifty thousand dollars for that card um it sold for fifty thousand dollars just last year, so that's not a crazy valuation for this card. Two, you know, they gave me really good, strong comps for my cards, so it was as good a deal as you could possibly hope for. Those guys were great. Um, I had my own little cheering section with Theo, Alan, and Doug, and those guys were great. I really appreciate them being there and helping me, guiding me helping me find the cards. And that's what it's all about, guys. The community coming together and helping each other. Every, you know, the, the, it was just like, everyone was super excited about the deal because it was a win-win for everyone. And, you know, the collectors themselves were just glad that a, a collector got something that they really wanted. And it, it worked out in the best way possible. And so here it is, this is the card. Um, I'm gonna try not to have it too, you know, blingy or bring it up as close as I can without glaring everyone. There we go. Um, there it is. It is an eight. I mean, it's, it's the grade that I was hoping to be able to get because I couldn't afford a nine. Definitely can't afford a 10. This is, you know, there's the back. It is just the black, the plain back not stamped. I'm not a crazy collector. I don't have to have all the variations the stamp so i i have one i don't need all the variations but for people who do and get all of the i mean who are just that master kind of collector then more power to you so there it is that's that is you know literally um you know the coolest card i've, I've, I've i own i would just say that it's cooler than the, than the than the rookie card just because of the history the rarity just the chase 
this is the coolest card I own now. So there's that. There's that card. So again, you know, check out uh, Clemente Collector's channel. Um, he'll have it on the video. You'll see the deal go down. And everyone was just, again, awesome to work with. And just felt like um, everyone was super excited for me to be able to, to, to get that done. Um, and so I really appreciated having friends and, and people just to share that with. So that alone would have been, I mean, a, an amazing national. Um, I was able to sell, to sell some other cards I brought with me um, to be able to work on some other deals. Um, and I was able to, because, um, you know, I, obviously I'm a big Griffey collector. And I did notice that there was not a lot of 90s baseball in the room. Now, I was told by some of the Griffey collectors that, you know, there was some good Griffey cards that were, were, were basically snapped up in the first couple of days. I knew that was going to happen. I put that in my video. But there wasn't that many. And it wasn't as good a quality as it was last year in the National. Um, but I was able to make one deal for, for one really good Griffey card. But it was a little more painful than I was hoping. But um, one of the dealers purchased the uh, liquidated inventory or part of the liquidated inventory for when Flair went bankrupt. And by doing that, they've got a lot of um, cool cards and inserts by having basically the cards that were left over or, you know, or from whoever purchased them. I, I don't want to go into, I don't know all the details, but I, knew, I do know they had a lot of cards from that time period. And one of the sets they had and cards they had was the Pulsars Flare Brilliance from 1999. These are pretty rare. And my buddy Dwayne picked up the one raw one that, or the single one, because this was unfortunately, well, I don't think unfortunately, because it ended up being a cool deal for me. Um, she was selling it in a set, wouldn't break it up. So I had to buy the entire set of these, um, you know, uh, Fleur Brilliant Shining Stars, uh, Pulsars. And the cool thing about these is that they're shiny on the back as well. They're double-sided. Um, this card has some corner damage. I'm. This is not a 10. This is more like a 7 you know, type card, maybe even a six, six or seven, but it's a great card. And I really enjoy having it. And even if I find a better copy later on, I, you know, I just like having this card because it's such a cool card. And again, it's in that probably, I think it's a seven um, type grade. Hey, still a great card. But the cool thing about it was to work, the, to, to be able to get it, I had to get the entire set. So I got the McGuire. Juan Gonzalez, Mike Piazza, A Rod. I know, hard to get good angles here. No more. Here's a good one. Jeter, the captain. Sammy Sosa. Manny Ramirez, Vlad Guerrero, it's just a lot of cool cards. Big set, 15 cards. Roger Clemens for an insert set, pretty good size. Greg Maddox, one for me. Frank Thomas, there we go. Chipper Jones and his stuff has taken off a little bit lately. I know there's some guys just getting into the big Chipper Jones set, set collecting. And then here is Cal Ripken. So it's a cool set. Tons of great stars from that era. Um, honestly, it, you know, when I thought about it, you know, and how just rare the cards are in general, how there was just no real, you know, I didn't find a lot of 90s cards in the show. Uh, it just made the deal and I had the cash. And again, I had sold some Marvel cards. Um, I ran into Neo when I was doing that. 
Um, I think maybe he bought uh, one of the, like, I had a Spider Gwen Platinum Portrait. He may have bought it off the dealer after I sold it. I mean, you know, I had, I got some of those cards on EPAC. So again, I didn't have a ton in some of those cards. Um, some of the cards I graded myself. So, you know, I sold them a little cheap, but, you know, I had a, a vision to get these cards, which I just think I love these cards. They're just so cool in the whole set. Um, you know, and I had other cards I was looking at and getting as well. So it, it, it was it was fine. You know, I I made I made money on the deal. Hopefully, Neo was able to pick up the, uh, the spider Gwen card cool uh, at a good price, which is a win-win for everyone. Um, and I picked up a few other Griffies, um, you know, from a dealer. A mother load seven i love that card even in a seven i think 75 dollars is a good price uh first day so skating club first day those are pretty rare so that's a cool card 97 bowman's best international refractor i mean that's a cool card it's an eight but still a cool card and then uh 1996 tops finest five star refractor and this was one of the mystery refractors so this is one of the ones I think they had the covering on it. It's a mystery refractor. PSA 9. So that's a, that's a pretty cool grade. So it's great to get, you know, some I call like maybe mid, you know, um, still cool Griffey cards. Now, so I got some cool Griffey cards. Nothing I call like you know, the Pulsar Griffey definitely was cool. And the whole set was awesome. But nothing too huge. So, but still a lot of nice cards and the 3D. So if that was the whole show for day one, then I would have been super, I mean, that would have been amazing. But walking around, um, there's a guy there who has an amazing collection of Clemente cards. Theo had him on his channel, interviewed him, and I was just talking to him and he was a, such a cool guy. And I looked down, and he's like, do you have the 71 Clemente? I'm like, yeah, I've got the tops. He's like, do you have the Opeachy? I'm like, no, that card is super hard to find. So rare. A lot of times, PSA men sizes it because, or, you know, because it was cut short, smaller. He had a PSA 6. And for people in the know on this card, this is incredibly rare. To find it graded and in this kind of condition. There's only five cards graded higher than this six. This is just a pop 10. There's less than 70 of these cards in existence. Very, almost very similar to the amount of 3D Clementes that are in existence. It's a tough card. I was able to get this card in a sweet, sweet six. It's off center top to bottom a little bit, but it is... A great card you can see that cool lpg back so i picked up two really tough clemente cards for my collection so that just really made the, the day just pretty awesome really really fun and again i was a little negative going into the show just because i've gone through this before where you know i put my hopes up and then i kind of crushed this time around you know, I had a community to help me and people rooting for me. And that, I think, really made it, A, work so much better. But I found a partner in Nash Cards that was willing to help me. And that's, it takes two people to make a deal happen. And they were great partners. Um, so tomorrow, day two for me, last day of the show, I got a few cards I'm looking at to maybe go out and get. I got some cards left over I can still sell and trade. So I'll try to hustle get one more nice card um i'm torn between vintage and some more modern cards like griffey there's some cool cards on either side um golden anniversary maze auto i think is an amazing card so you know we'll see what we get um but it'll be fun and even if i get nothing i've had a great show so there it is guys hopefully um you guys uh, if any of you guys are going to be at the show tomorrow i'll see you but if not um it's been a great national for me Hopefully you enjoy the video, and i see you next time on Cards and Comics. Bye.